I had um, a chance to take some time to think about it. I got sick in 2012, um, so I had to take a year off. Um, but that year off was really kind of everything I needed. Um, at that point, I applied for craft school at Sheridan. Um, I had the time I needed to think about what I really wanted to do and if being a social science, going into social sciences and being a therapist was exactly what I wanted. Um, so I rolled in Sheridan in 2013, um, majored in hot shop glass and minored in sand casting. Um, hot shop glass is the process um, where you're working with furnace glass. Um, so you have large furnaces that are keeping your hot glass hot at all times and you're working with big blow pipes going into the pipes to increase the size of your glass and everything. Um, I minored in sand casting, uh, which is the process is very, it says it is what it is. Sand casting is taking a bed of sand and pressing your mold into the sand, something like your hand or whatever impression you want. Um, and then you would take molten glass and pour it into that mold and you would have your molten piece afterwards. Um, Sheridan was really great for that. They had a lot of different um, studios that you could work in, like the hot shop. They had sand casting, they had kiln casting, which is um, a lot more mold based. You're working with mold materials and you're working with glass that is cold and you're putting it into those molds and then putting it into the kiln to melt them into those forms afterwards. Um, there was also flame working, which is uh, you're working at a torch. Um, so it's a little smaller type of work that you would work with. Um, I immediately fell in love with the material, uh, the physics of it. It really just kind of made a lot of sense to me, especially with a hot shop. Everything kind of works with gravity and centrifugal force and paying attention to what your material do, does in those moments, like where your heat's at and everything. It, it just is very logical material and I just loved how that clicked. Um, so I think that's something that like really drew me to it the most. Um, so I graduated in 2016 from Sheridan. Um, I had four awards by the end of school and I was awarded a student summer residency at Harbor Fun. Um, so it was a really awesome experience. I really loved Sheridan all around. It was a really great school. Um, so my series that I work on, um, this is my fragment series, the pieces that I've been showing you the last couple of slides here. Um, it started when I was in my last year of school. The whole idea, it started with the idea of erosion in mind and the impression of erosion. I'm really fascinated with how the natural wearing away of the glands can change a form from one thing into something entirely different. Um, so natural elements of water, air, sand, um, and that's why I gravitate towards my process as well. Um, I sandblast all of my pieces. So I start with a whole blown form. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit more about this in a second, but just to run over it quick so it makes sense with erosion. I blow my forms and then I use my sandblaster, which is compressed air and grit, shooting at your glass at high velocity. And I'm using that to wear away my material to create all the holes that I have in my pieces. Um, this is actually one of my first pieces that I made when I was at Sheridan. Um, this piece specifically, I had actually broke going into my harbor front interview, uh, which is super traumatic. And I had to really convince myself not to cry. Um, I was minutes away from my interview and I had my pieces all packed up and everything and then my water bottle just fell into my box with my pieces and I immediately heard the crash and I just kind of had to like compose myself and be, be calm and realize that it was okay and that it's glass and things break and they were super understanding about it and I got the residency anyway so it's all good. Um, so I'm going to stop the share for a minute here and show you guys around my studio space a little bit. Hopefully this works well. Um, let me know how it goes. I'm also going to turn my air conditioning off for a minute because it's a little bit loud. Give me two seconds for that. We have a very, quite a large building so it gets a little bit stuffy in here. So I'm going to show you guys, let me know how this 
is, I think it's okay. This is my sandblaster. Um, so this is the machine I use to carve my pieces. I'm gonna open it up a little bit. So you can kind of see inside the whole cabinet and there's like a gun and everything that's there. And the, the grit and the compressed air shoot out of that gun and at my glass. So my glass starts like this. I'm just gonna place the computer down in a sec. Point you guys towards my glass cabinet. So this is my glass cabinet. This is where I keep all my pieces, mostly because we have cats at the studio and I don't want them to break them. Um, so the glass starts like this, different shapes and sizes. This is just a small one just to show you. It'll be a whole glass orb like this, which I've basically just blown right on the pipe and I just knock it off and I put it away in the kiln. Um, so typically I go to a hot shop in Toronto and I go and blow basically as many pieces as I can make. Um, if I have a commission or if I have a show in mind and I have things that I'm kind of designated to make, I'll make sure that's done. Um, after I blow my glass, I come back to my studio in London. Um, and this is right here, kind of a piece that's kind of started, right? So you can see how I've started to take some of the chunks out of this one, basically. Um, and then I'll show you one that I literally just finished yesterday. Um, this one doesn't have a seal on it yet, but you can see from the images that I have in my slideshow that once they're finished and sealed and everything, they have like a more oiled kind of look rather than so frosted. Just give me a second and I just pull this up. Let me turn my computer back around. So I'm going to go back onto the share mode, go back to my slideshow. Okay. So I, from Sheridan, um, uh, at that point in 2017, I started exhibiting at large scale shows. Um, so things like Toronto Outdoor Art Fair, uh, when I started, it was Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibit. Um, so these first few images are, this is my first year doing Toronto Outdoor, um, and this is my second year doing Toronto Outdoor. Uh, so you can kind of see like a bit of a development and progression. This is the last year in 2019 that I did it. Um, so your display has like, it has a lot, it, show, it shows a lot of for your pieces, right? Like you can see the progression with how I've kind of just considered how I'm gonna display my work over the years. Um, in 2019, I was awarded um, a spot in the artist project in their untapped um, section, which is their emerging artist section. Um, so it was a free booth for the artist project. It was really great uh, for me. I was able to meet a lot of galleries, uh, meet a lot of people, get a lot of connections and clients for that show. Um, I also got uh, shared um, in the Toronto Star um, for an article of uh, who to check out at the artist project in the emerging artist section. Um, it was kind of, uh, yeah, it was, it was really great and validating experience being at the artist project all around. That was kind of like, I feel like my first time really, you know, feeling like things were kind of moving for me a little bit more. Um, this is Artist Project last year, um, so 2020. Um, this was the last exhibit I did before COVID. Um, this was February 24th, and I believe shutdown started around like March 10th. Um, so it was nice to be able to squeeze that in before uh, things kind of got shifted around. Um, this is me with my empty booth afterwards, very excited about all my sold pieces. Um, this year, I also had the chance to exhibit at um, the Interior Design Show, uh, which is more of a, it's more of a large, tra large scale trade show, um, a lot more booths with um, interior design layouts, like whole rooms laid out, whole kitchens laid out, um, 
yeah, it was a really, really amazing experience. If you ever have the chance to go to an interior design show, I highly recommend it. I was in the Studio North section, um, which is more of a smaller exhibit space. Um, so you can notice I'm exhibiting more of my lighting here. Um, it being an interior design show, I focused on more of my kind of design elements and my functional um, wear that I make. Um, let me put my picture of my lights. This was actually from my solo exhibit at Good Sport um, in 2018, I'm pretty sure, um, which was really great. It was my first time meeting all the Good Sport gang and getting that connection with you guys and, you know, building on like London community is always really awesome. Like London in general, the art community is really great here. Um, one thing I do have to say about shows is your application with your applications your images are key um if you're applying for any shows any kind of grants whatever it is your images are so 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 important so having the best um even having somebody else shoot for you if you feel that you don't have the ability to do it for you is worth the investment um i've met artists in the past who had just got knocked on into a show just because their images weren't very good um also keeping your bios like short and sweet you know get you you want to get to your point and you don't want to over embellish things and that's kind of the best way i find to go about doing your applications is really solid images and sort of short and sweet bios um here are a couple of uh variations of my series um so one thing I also wanted to talk about was um, gallery representation. Um, so my first time getting picked up by gallery was um, the Sandra Ainsley Gallery in Toronto. She's an entire like glass gallery. She's one of the biggest ones in Canada. Um, she picked me up after my graduation exhibit at Sheridan. Um, and then my other two galleries I have my work at is called Two Gallery in Picton and Arteria in Bromont, Quebec. Um, and I find like the best way to get that representation is doing shows, even though shows are so intimidating with the financial, the amount you have to put out to do it and how much work is required around it. It seems so intimidating. It seems so scary, but I've found that's just the best way to actually meet people is you have to show people your work, you know. Um, Arteria has been a really great gallery for me. Um, just shuffle through these couple pieces just to, like go over them quick um, these kind of just like show variation of um, how I've kind of approached the holes now um, working with thickness and dimension with the pieces working with color layering the colors up um, so my gallery in Quebec Arteria they are a um, international gallery um, they exhibit at um, a handful of international shows per year. Um, this year, obviously, that's not, not as much the case with COVID. Um, they'll do roughly between 10 to 20 shows uh, a year, anywhere from Hong Kong, Seattle, uh, New York, London. Um, so I've been really, really grateful to be represented by them. Um, they've taken me to um, Seattle, was the first time I was exhibited internationally. This is my piece in Seattle there. And this was me exhibiting in New York City. Um, so it's, it, it's not me going there, it's the gallery taking my work for me and representing my work for me, um, which is a really kind of nice and easy way to get your work out there and not have to um, do all that legwork of traveling and everything. Um, this was me with my crate shipping my nine pieces to New York last year. Um, it was the most terrifying experience of my life trying to ship glass at that scale. Um, I was definitely an anxious mess that day, like waiting for the email that my pieces arrived safely, but everything got there okay. Everything exhibited well. Um, so last thing I wanted to talk about was my studio development. Um, this was my first sand blaster. Um, so the machine that I used to carve my, my glass. Um, I had my first um, commission right from the Sandra Ainsley Gallery for my grad exhibit. So I had to figure out a way to sand blast quickly out of school. 
Um, so I purchased the cheapest sandblaster I could find on Kijiji and I rented a gas compressor because it needs compressed air. And I worked in the hot beating sun for a week to get that commission done, but it somehow worked. Um, and now I have my studio at 629 Dundas Street, which we call City Rest. Um, it's a lovely space. We absolutely adore it here. Um, I work here with my partner, um, Sean Durant, his brother, Derek Durant. Um, we have screen printers that work in the front. Um, you guys might know a handful of these names, Robin Henry from Antler River Press, um, Elena from Soft Flirt. We have Michaela, she's from Flourish and Grow. Um, Adam, he plays in Whoopso, Adam Sturgeon. Um, and they run uh, Resonance, um, their internship uh, from the front as well. Um, we used to also have uh, Kelly Van Ray, a ceramicist that worked in London, but she's now in Hong Kong. Um, so I continue blowing my glass in Toronto and I come back here and I work on all my pieces and everything. Um, this is our gallery space. The first time kind of we got it cleaned up and everything and ready for uh, the street to view. And uh, I'm going to stop it here again and I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the space. Um, and then from that point, we'll open up to questions. So I'm going to stop the share and then I'll do a little bit of a walk up to the gallery and show you guys the screen printing area and a little bit of a better view of my area. Um, so bear, bear with me while we walk here. Hopefully I don't make you guys dizzy or something. It's a bit of a long building actually. So I'm going to flip you around. We have our gallery here. Um, this is our front area. We have Orange Shirt Day happening on September 23rd. So if you guys need orange shirts for that, um, hit up Resonance. Uh, they will help you out. A couple of my pieces and my partner's paintings up on the walls. My paintings up on the walls. And then we have a couple of pieces from Robin. I'm the Antler River Press. Another one of their paintings there. I don't know if I'm like really showing this that well, but. And then here's a shirt from one of the old interns from last year's round. So that's the gallery space. This is um, the screen printer space. So you can see all the presses that they have. They have their large flash dryer. They have quite the setup. We have about four screen printers that work in here regularly. Um, and typically we would have interns in here as well. Um, over here is where Kelly Van Ray's space used to be. Um, she had her ceramics set up there. This is where I have my kiln and everything. This is one of our studio kitties. Cynthia. <laughs> and then just back there is our lounge area. And in the very back, we have a music rehearsal space. That's kind of our private area for the most part. So yeah, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much to Good Sport for inviting me to do this. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you to the Ontario Arts Council for funding such an awesome thing. Um, London has some really great talent and I'm really stoked to be a part of this community. So I'll hand it off to you guys. Thank you so much, Shannon and Andre. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah. That was awesome. No problem. Here, I'll stop the share, actually. Perfect. Um, yeah, so I uh, guess we can open it up to any questions anybody has now. If you're comfortable with saying your question out loud, go for it. If you'd rather type it out in the chat, we can say it for you. Anybody have any questions off the top of their head? Hi, yeah. I think you're muted. You'll have to unmute your mic. We can undo it. Uh, try now. Okay. Oh, there you go. Hi, Leela. Hi. 
I went to school with Leela. She went to Sheridan. You were in the year ahead of me, weren't you, Leela? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was. And I'm so excited to see your studio running. Yeah. And I'm just to let you know that I drink out of your beautiful cup that you gave me almost Aww. every day. It does not be somebody else. And Sean's coffee cups. Oh, it's, that's so sweet. Sign just starts my day out right. And so that's does Lily. I love them. Thank you so much. I'm no so problem. proud to see that you're on your way. Like, you have great work. And while well, the evolution of what you've done is just amazing. Aww, thank you so much, Lila. Just amazing. That. And I love your hair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Wow, yeah. I'm hopefully I'll be able to come out and visit you one day. Yes, definitely. I'd love to have uh, you at my studio. Any anyone, honestly, we're we're open here. We would love to have anybody visit. If you want to come see the showroom, if you want to come see the space, um, I'm running fused glass workshops in my space. Um, I'm gonna hold off for a little bit for the next couple months, but in the future, screen printers. I know that they want to do some. Uh, open print nights and stuff uh once we kind of like yeah figure some things out and everything nice yeah. exciting yeah. say say hello to sean i will i will are, are you are you guys like is he singing still does he have some some music out too yep all of us are uh playing music i'm thankful to be in a studio full of musicians Wow. Um, I play music in a band with him as well, so that's fun. Oh, maybe you can post it on your page or something. I know, so yeah. I don't post much of my music, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll look for Sean's. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice okay. talking to you, Leela. Nice talking to you, too. Ciao. Keep well. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Um, actually, I do. Um, I'm kind of interested in how you ship your work so far. Like, so you showed that crate and obviously it's fragile, but I've also seen other kinds of art shipped that far and it's always kind of like confused me. So terrifying. can you explain some of that? Um, so I um, double box my work. Um, so I put a box within a box, lots and lots and lots of stuffing. Um, I go to, um, like any kind of like fabric store. I go to Lens Mills specifically London, for London. Um, and they have those kind of memory foam bed mats. Um, so I'll buy a queen size memory foam mat and I'll cut that up into sheets. And I'll use that as kind of like padding in between my boxes. And then I'll pad my pieces up really nicely and make sure it's not gonna shift. And then lots and lots of bubble wrap. Um, and I do like a solid shape test to like hear if I have anything like rattling around or, you know, like anything shifting. You wanna make sure everything's tight in there, basically. Um, but that's kind of my method. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I did have my gallery in Quebec cause I had asked advice from them when I first started shipping um, how other artists do it. And they, they basically told me the same, you know, doing lots, lots and lots of padding, even if it looks hideous does not matter if it's going to get there safe. It does not matter. Um, they had had an incident where a piece got ran over by forklift, a painting got ran over by forklift. Um, but it was actually okay because it was packaged well enough. <laughs> um, that sounded terrifying to me, but yeah, no. Um, I was like, oh my God, are my pieces going to get run over by forklift? <laughs> yeah, worst nightmare, huh? Yeah, yeah. I had a question as well. Um, I was just wondering, you said that you go to Toronto to like do the blowing, like blowing your glass. I'm assuming like it's not feasible for you to have your own space to do that. Yeah. Uh, but is okay. Toronto, like, is that the closest or is it, there's something else appealing about the space there? Um, the main place I go to is uh, one of my old stu studio, um, right, one of my old teacher's studios. Um, but the closest place is probably Hamilton, but I don't know if he really rents. Um, he like rents sometimes, but like sometimes doesn't. Um, the place I actually rent in, like rent at is in Georgetown. Um, so just outside of Toronto, but I always just say Toronto because that's easier for people to understand. Um, I think I probably more so go there because I just know the space so well. And I've just been there for so many years now that they know what I like, like I go there and everything's set up for me entirely. Like the kilns are set up the way I like, 
everything's all happy and dandy and they still have a really good price. It's very, very pricey sometimes to float glass. Um, so I'm kind of lucky with my process that I don't require much glass flowing. It's a lot more carving than anything. I always say that I'm more of like a carver than I am a glass blower. But. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Word. No, okay. okay, so we have a question from Elena. Um, so her question is, what's next um, as in terms of, like in the terms of any direction you are curious about developing within your practice um, or any dream projects you would love to work on in the future? Uh, she says, I love seeing the history of how your piece has developed to get to where you are now and excited to see what you continue to do, especially the lights, which are super cool. I also agree. Um, the lights are really interesting. And I had a similar question along the lines of this too, kind of like how you adapt your work to new like settings, like a light, for example. But yeah, yeah answer Elena's question first, which is... <laughs> totally. Um, so to answer Elena's question, um, Honestly, right now it's just taking more time for myself and just kind of experimenting with what I'm making. Um, just kind of want, you want to, I just feel like I want to just keep things as fresh as I can and really think about what I can do within my work. Um, that's why I try to try the different carving styles that I'm trying. Um, so I have a couple of different ideas for different um, things to incorporate within my carving. And it's going to be along the same lines of like using the space that I work. Um, but um, yeah, just developing that series a little bit more, um, working on different styles of lighting. I do have a commission to make a table lamp, um, which is kind of cool to like play with the whole idea of how I would do table lighting versus pendant lighting. Um, I'm more so excited for the future of the studio. Um, I feel like that's been such a focus for us for the last like couple of years. Um, we, got the studio in about 2018. Um, so yeah, just uh, planning things for the studio. We want to do things like artist residencies. We want to do internships. Um, we want to open up the space to other people. Did you guys lose her on your screen as well? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> um, if everyone can give us one sec, we're just going to send him in a message and see maybe her computer died or something. So just give us one sec. She is re entering. Here we go. So you need to make sure you plug your laptop in a top in when you're doing an artist talk, apparently. <laughs> All good. Okay, though, turn back on right away. Um, yeah, so just planning things for the studio. That's kind of what's in store for for future for me, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, what was your question, Andre? Uh, similar, um, but actually, uh, now that you mention it. Um, you're kind of doing some exploration, which I think is cool. Looking at the slideshow that you showed, um, a lot of your pieces have like personality, I find, and it really depends on the color palette you choose, which I think is really interesting. So I think a good example is like some of the lavender pastel pieces are like really soft and the carvings you've done are really round and kind of um, that kind of texture. And then the, like, there's one that's like really red and dark and it's like all the cuttings are like really sharp. So my question, I guess, is like, how do you approach because you are making something that's so permanent, you can't like carve something and put it back. Do yeah. you like a lot of sketching beforehand? Do you like make small um, pieces that are for practice? Like, what do you do? Um, yeah, I, it's very, um, it's very improvisational. Um, when I approach the pieces, I kind of just examine the pieces and kind of see what will work best for it. Um, if I have a new carving idea in mind, I'll pick which color and which form will work best for that. Um, also, my thickness of my glass has something to do with that as well. Um, so just considering all those elements and, and how I would approach it in that way. Um, but yeah, just um, taking into consideration how the carving will fit within the pieces. Um, and then I do do other shapes as well. Like a lot of the pieces that I showed in the slideshow were all primarily orbs. Um, but I do make some more kind of asymmetrical pieces um, 
or I'll purposely make pieces really thick. Um, so that way I will have that material to play with and that depth to play with. Actually, uh, branching on, off from that, I know you also um, make jewelry out of what you cut out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Actually own a piece. So um, maybe if you can talk a little bit about that, like adapting kind of like what, like so it's no waste in a way, like what you're carving yeah, out so, using it something else? Yeah, so for a while there, I still kind of make it, but I don't, I don't have as much time for it, which is, it's kind of a good thing because I, I have more time, like it's, my time is more dedicated now to working on my series, which is more of what I wanted. Um, but I started working on the jewelry because I would have all of these pieces accumulating. Um, I'm going to show you a little bucket of pieces. <laughs> So I have all these lovely little shards of glass that I collect because I can't bear the thought of throwing away perfectly good material. Um, and yeah, so when I first started the series, I'd have all these pieces accumulating because when I carve the holes, I'll kind of go around and create a whole line and I'll end up with a little, whole, little pop out of glass afterwards. Um, so it ended up developing into a jewelry line. Um, so I would make wire wrapped jewelry out of those. So if you go on my Instagram, um, there's a lot of examples of that. Um, I have been experimenting with some fused glass um, with those pieces, um, which has been fun. Um, fused glass is basically the idea of taking pieces of glass and sheet glass and laying it together, cold glass, like at room temperature. And then you would put it in the kiln afterwards and melt that all together to one cohesive piece, um, just for if anyone was wondering. Awesome. Uh, Monica had a question. How do you control the thickness when blowing the glass? Um, that's a lot of just technique. Um, just understanding how the material works. Um, we're shown a lot in school, like how to control because you have to consider where your heat is in the glass when you're blowing into the glass. The hottest point of your glass, your glass is gonna wanna expand the most. Um, so if you picture blowing glass at the end of the blowpipe, first thing in the furnace, and first thing out of the furnace is the hottest point. So when you blow into it, that's gonna expand the most. Um, so it's a lot about controlling your heat and where it is. So using tools to cool areas. Um, so that way your air, when you blow into it, will go into other areas versus um, so if I'm blowing a piece and I'm trying to like blow out an area more, it's like, oh, this area is a little bit thick. I'll, I'll cool this area a little bit more while I'm blowing. So in that way, my air will be direct to that area, basically. Um, so it's just a lot of uh, technique and uh, development with that. Have you ever had like any glass blowing accidents? Definitely. Lots of glass blowing accidents. I feel like glass blowing is like prone to accidents. Um, as is like any material, obviously, like any like materials, it's a lot of just like understanding what it wants to do. Um, and then even sometimes when you think you have a grasp on it, it just like still just like, won't do what you want it to do. Um, yeah, even like with my workshoppers, I had two workshop pieces um, accidentally break recently. And I was devastated. I was like, oh my goodness, like I thought these would work. Like, how did this not work? And yeah, it's just breaking it down to like those elements, like, okay, what happened here? How was this piece made? How did it go into the kiln? And just understanding the material that way, you know, um, those people got to come in and remake their pieces anyway. So they weren't happy. Awesome. Uh, we have Enith here who has a question, uh, which is, how does it feel to have your own studio slash showing space and has it influenced the way you approach your pieces? Um, yeah, it's great. Um, our studio's been a long time coming for us. Like we had hunted for a space for a while. And uh, it was just, yeah, once we had gotten the space and finally got here, we just like wanted nothing more than just to make the space as like awesome as we could, you know, and um, open our doors to other people in that way too. You know, we wanted to share our space with other people. Um, but I guess just influencing my work um having that motivation of having a studio sometimes is really nice um you know like having people around me working all the time like people like robin and adam and elena and they're such hard workers and 
it's like sometimes it's like okay I've been kind of lazy for a day or two and Robin's been here working like every single day I should kind of get off my butt and like do a little bit of work you know um so it's kind of like nice having like that a little bit of like accountability um having other people in space as well um so yeah I love it here it's awesome awesome uh Rachel asks what do you do when you have a creative block or have you ever had one I oh yeah everyone has uh, like I think that's like our biggest curse is like creative blocks and not knowing what the heck to make and also not knowing how to develop your series further and try not to stay stagnant is like super important um working with other materials that's my best way of doing it is I just like will start painting I'll start like knitting crocheting sewing um, I play music a lot. I play bass in a couple bands. So that's been a really great way for me to kind of disconnect from my main work that I do um, and to delve into creativity in another way. Um, I find it's just good to keep your like, keep your like, keep your bases open, you know, and, and keep the idea of working with other materials open and don't stay stagnant within a material, you know, like, just because I went to school to be a glass artist or I'm a professionally, professionally trained glass artist, um, I still call myself a visual artist um, because I want to be able to experiment with those other materials and not feel like I'm just like in that one box basically. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, I, ha I have one last question if that's okay. Um, yeah. You touched a little bit about uh, gallery, gallery representation, uh, which I thought was really interesting. I think that's a huge milestone for many artists. Could you touch a little bit more on um, maybe like the interpersonal kind of relationship that you have to have with the gallery, um, the communication skills, all of these things that make that relationship successful? Yeah, um, it is, it's definitely important to keep um, things open with your galleries. Um, I try and like touch base with my galleries as best as I can, even though, even if it's a case where I can't even you know, restock them, I'll just be like, hey, sorry, like still thinking about you guys, like haven't been able to restock you guys for a little while. Um, also cycling your work um, often enough is important. Like if your pieces have been there for a couple of years, take them out, um, put fresh ones in. Um, the gallery will probably ask you to anyway um, and you should probably email them before they ask you that um, and it's just good to have that fresh work in there all the time because then who knows say a client saw it like that last year and then there's like this fresh new piece and it's like a different color different carving and it's just like really appealed to them and they really wanted it for their space um, so just keeping fresh work is really important um, and uh, also following up at shows um sometimes i'm not the best at that sometimes i can be really brutal following up at shows um because you'll meet all these people at your exhibits and they hand you cards or they'll ask you for cards or whatever and sometimes those follow-ups happen um so i find it's important if you really um want that gallery to follow through you need to like go ahead and do it occasionally they'll email you but it's most of the time you need to email them um and showing that initiative um really helps sometimes too um but yeah does that kind of answer that? totally yeah. um john did not get to catch your slideshow if you wouldn't mind showing a couple uh photos from your slideshow again okay. just some of your work. um i'll go back to share screen um so just like, you're, um, at, while you're showing them, um, yeah. your pieces have, um, like, are they titled? My pieces, they're all called Fragments. Um, I'm actually working on a little, I'm trying to work on a new um, title series for them um, to add more variation. Um, they're more based on kind of like the feel I get from them. Like this one's titled Earth Fragment. Um, most of them are, are titled according to their color as well. Um, give me a second to like go all the way back here. Um, these ones are called sedimentary fragments because they're like multi-layer. It's play on the idea of erosion. Um, and I'll just name them based on their colors. Um, terraced fragment. Um, so it's just kind of what I kind of see from it. I'll call this one variegated fragment. Um, but this gives John a good idea of 
what my pieces look to, like to and some of my variation of them. Some of my lights. That's probably good. Isn't it? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions at all they'd like to ask? No, all good. Okay, well, thank you so much, Nan. We, I think, all learned a lot. Um, I was definitely not expecting to learn lots of things that were not even related to glass blowing. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Really, really great. Uh, thank you awesome. very much. Uh, thank you to everyone who um, came and joined us for Hanan's talk. There will be another talk next month with a brand new artist. So, um, please give us a follow on Instagram, uh, Facebook, as well as at Goodsport and Hanan as well. Um, and you can find all that um, on our, any of our pages and Hanan as well. Awesome. Thank you so Thanks much, everybody. guys. I really appreciate you inviting me. And thank you so much for everybody for tuning in. It's really awesome to see you all. And familiar faces. It's nice to see familiar faces. Some people from school and some people from London. Some people I've never seen, which is cool too. You know. <laughs> awesome. So take care. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys. It was nice seeing you.